The April 2021 Visa Bulletin is now out. So in this video, we're going to talk about what movement we are seeing in the Visa Bulletin for the family-based preference categories, as well as some good news we have regarding the employment-based preference categories. So make sure you stick around. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. The April 2021 Visa Bulletin has been posted. I know it's early, it's only March 12th. Very surprising that the April 2021 Visa Bulletin has been posted so we can go into all of that in this video. Before we get started, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button, join the D'Angelo family and turn on your post notifications so you can be notified each and every time I have an update for you. Also, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up right now for the April 2021 Visa Bulletin being released super early gives everybody time to prepare and we're not scrambling at the end of the month once the visa bulletin is published it has been published way ahead of schedule so we are very very happy about that okay so let's jump right in I want to make this video quick and easy my previous visa bulletin videos have tons of information regarding how to read the visa bulletin which chart you should be looking at so I'm not going to go into all of that information right now if you want to see those videos I'll link them down below so you can check them out but let's just jump right into what movement we are now seeing okay so for the final action dates for the family based preference categories we're seeing an increase of two weeks across the board for the F1 category F to a stay the same because obviously it's been current this entire time so it continues to be current for the f2b categories we also see an increase of two weeks across the board except for mexico we only see an increase of one week here for f3 we see one week increase for all chargeability areas china and india and for mexico we see an increase of two weeks and for philippines we see an increase of one month and then for the f4 category we see one week increase for all chargeability areas as well as for china and mexico for india it's two weeks and for philippines it's one month now let's take a look at dates for filing uh, for the f1 category we see an increase of one month across the board except for mexico mexico there is no change and for philippines it was an increase of one year so one full year for the philippines for f2a it's uh one month across the board for f2b we see three weeks for all chargeability areas china and india but for mexico it was actually an increase of seven months and for Philippines, it was an increase of seven months as well. For F3, there was no changes except for the Philippines, it did increase four months. And for F4, once again, no changes, um, but the Philippines did jump ahead one year. Let's get into the final action dates for employment-based preference categories. So here's where we see some really good news, a really good change. For EB1, for the first preference category, we now see that it's current for both China and India. So previously, uh, for a really long time, actually, both China and Indian nationals uh, in the EB1 preference categories had their uh, had a priority date listed, had a wait time. But now, Chinese nationals and Indian nationals, just like everyone else in the EB1 preference category, can adjust status uh, beginning April 1st. So if you're in EB1 category, no matter what your nationality is, you're eligible to adjust status beginning April 1st, and that's, that's great news there. There's no wait time if you're filing from within the United States. So for the EB2 category, we see an increase of one and a half months for Chinese nationals and three and a half months for Indian nationals. Um, for EB3, we see a one month increase for China and two months for India. For other workers, once again, one month for China, two months for India. In the fourth preference category and certain religious workers, we see an increase of two months for El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and one month for Mexico. And then for EB5, there isn't a change for China, but there is an increase of two months for Vietnam. And for dates for filing, the EB1 preference category was current across the board. Um, the change was obviously only necessary for final action dates for those adjusting status. Um, but so let's look at the second preference category here. There's an increase of three months for China. India, there was no increase. Uh, actually, in in dates for filing, there wasn't a change 
at all for India, whether it was EB2, EB3, or other workers that stayed the same. The only increases here are for China, which is an increase of three months for second preference, uh, two months for third, and two months for other workers. And then for El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras, there's an increase of two months for fourth preference in certain religious workers. And for EB5, there was no change. If we're looking at the DV lottery chart, it is uh, exactly what um, the Department of State stated in the previous month. The numbers are exactly what they said, 22,000 for Africa, 9,000 Asia, Europe, 12,000 North America, 7, 1,100 Oceania, and 1,400 South America and the Caribbean. For the cutoffs for May, they've posted that for Africa, it'll be 34,000 Asia, 13,000 Europe, 18,000 North America, 8, Oceania, 1,400 South America and the Caribbean 1650. So as a reminder, if you are inside the United States and you are going to be adjusting status, you must use the final action dates unless otherwise stated on USCIS's website. So you use the final action dates unless they say you can use the dates for filing. Now in previous months, if you were in the family-based preference category, they allowed you to use dates for filing to submit adjustment of status applications except for the F2A category because the F2A category was actually current, uh, has been current in the final action date, so they let you use the final action dates for F2A category uh, to adjust status. But if you are in any other preference category, you would use the dates for filing chart. So that's the only thing for adjustment of status. It will indicate which chart to use. Now, if you're filing employment, based categories. Typically every month they always say continue to use the final action dates, but just keep up to date with USCIS's website and what they indicate there. But I anticipate it to continue to be the final action date for you to use for employment-based preference categories. Now, if you are outside of the United States, remember you will keep up with the priority dates in the dates for filing chart only. You don't use the final action dates. If you are consular processing, you always use dates for filing. And if you are inside the United States adjusting status, you'll typically use final action dates unless they state that you can use the dates for filing. So once again, if you need more detailed information on how to read the visa bulletin, you can go ahead and check out my previous videos for other months. I'll link them in the description bar below. Also, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up so YouTube knows to spread this information throughout the platform. Also, make sure you are subscribed with your post notifications turned on so you can be notified each and every time I have an update for you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.